So I did a little uh, piece on the barrel valve the other day and posted it. I actually had quite a few views on it. I think I had, I don't know, maybe 80 or 90 views just within a day. Um, but going back and reviewing it, I saw a couple things I didn't like. I didn't explain very well. The lighting I had wasn't very good. So I'm going to redo it today. So uh, we're going to go through the barrel valve and explain how it works. Um, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, how the idle bypass gets cut off uh, as soon as you start accelerating, uh, things like that. I want to show you why it'll make really good sense when you see the internal components to the barrel valve itself. And uh, we'll get started here in just a second. So I've talked so much about all the other components of the uh, constant flow mechanical fuel injection. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the barrel valve. I, I just decided that, you know, I've, we've talked about everything else, uh, nozzles, pump, uh, high-speed bypass, pill hold, main pill holder, uh, secondary bypass, or vital bypass. You know, I, I can't really with a clear conscience quit without talking about the barrel valve. So this is, this is the barrel valve. Uh, again, this is on a 70s vintage Crower fuel injection, eight stack injection. Uh, many, many similar type of units were manufactured over the years. Um, but you know, when I was in part one of the series, I talked about uh, the barrel valve and how uh, when it's in the, the throttles and the idle configuration that, you know, 80% of it, the fuel or so, comes from the pump, gets bypassed, goes through the idle bypass can, and then dumps back into the into your fuel tank, right? It's just excess fuel that's not needed when you're at idle. And then when you ramp up the throttle, uh, this circuit goes away, and that's the terminology I used, but um, it blocks off the output from here and forces the fuel right onto the top of the barrel valve and makes it available for the nozzles through the hoses. So, so let's get in there. Let's see. Let's see how that thing works, right? So obviously, I've loosened this up ahead of time to make things go a little faster. But so there's looking right in the top of. The, yeah, get this so you can see. That's looking right down the top. So that hole there, that hole is the idle bypass, and it goes into is drilled down into the center of the spool. And I'm going to take it apart here in a minute so you can get a better look at it. But um, So fuel would come from the pump, go in that hole, and go down the center of the spool and exit this fitting toward your idle bypass can. Now, as I rotate it this way, I'm increasing the throttle. I'm increasing it by turning it this way. And you can see, there it is. You can see the ramp just start. Now, the ramp is what allows, it's a groove cut in the spool. And again, we'll look at it real closely here in a second, but it starts to allow fuel to come, or more fuel come down into the plenum down here and connects between all these. And we'll, again, I'll, we'll take a look, a closer look at this whole thing. So, but anyway, so when you're idle, most of the fuel, 80, 90%, depending on how you have the leak down set, um, is going this way and that's why we cap this off when we do the leak down of the barrel valve we cap this off so we basically are ignoring that hole and we're concentrating just on on how much leaks past that little ramp and goes down to the nozzles okay so let's take this guy apart we'll take this fitting off of here now this just has a it's got a little a little shoulder cut on it here there's a spring that sits on the shoulder and a little rubber O-ring to seal it. Obviously, we'll set that off to the side. So now that that is off, and of course the arm is disconnected, I can push the spool right out and uh, using my, my aid here from my chopsticks that we talked about in one of, the, one of the videos. I forget which one, but okay. So now we pull the spool out of there. So the first thing is, is what's this spring for? Well, if you look on this end, you can see, and I got, I've had it apart, obviously. There's a little bit of silicone grease on it, but there's a little O-ring, an O-ring, and a little flat washer, like a uh, just a thrust washer kind of thing, 
and that pushes like that. So the spring, when the fitting is up against it, pushes the, the spool this way up against the back side of this bushing. It's a bronze bushing in there, uh, pressed in from the back side. And that just makes sure that you've got a good seal around the shaft so you don't have leakage. That's all the spring does, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at what's going on with the spool. Remember, uh, I showed it like this. You see the whole fuel will be bypassing through. Well, let me back up one get ahead of myself a little bit. I want to show you that hole there, right? And it comes right through there to the center. That's the only hole all the way around. That's the only hole that goes, goes uh, into that center. So when you're in idle, fuel's going through there, goes out to your bypass circuit, okay? That's the only place it can go. As you rotate it around, now I put this, this white background here here, let me get it closer. The white background. Now watch this bottom edge here where that groove is cut in the spool as I rotate it. I'm increasing the throttle position, increasing, increasing, increasing. All right, about there, I'm at full throttle already. So see how deep it gets? So now at that point, obviously, the idle bypass is closed off. That's sealed, so all the fuel is coming through this side of the spool and, and if you look at it it's it, it goes like all the way around right and the reason for that is so if you were looking down at it from here looking down there's a passage that goes straight down into that hole so let's look at this let's see what's going on with that that hole is drilled that goes all the way down to the bottom of this uh, this block. And what's going on here is, well, let's see if I can get a better look at, at this uh, inside here for you. On the top of the barrel valve, you'll see that hole. There, there it is. Okay, you can see that hole there. Now that's where the fuel go into your nozzles, would pass through around the barrel, or around the spool, and then if I rotate it a little bit, you can see there's, there's the hole passes, continues to pass through, so fuel would go around the spool when it's opened up, and go down into the bottom of this block, right? So in this block, where's all these holes where your hoses connect, you know, they're all tied together. And let me show you this. If I stick this down here in this hole, right? Look at that. Can you see that? That goes all the way down, ties all these, all of these uh, fittings together. So all the hole, hoses are all one in that plenum down there. Okay, so let's see. What else did I want to talk about? Okay, so looking down in there again, you can see the end, the brass bushing on the end there. But also I want to note that it's not an aluminum hole. If it was just an aluminum surface, it would just get torn up, you know, real quickly from the, from the uh, methanol would just eat it up. So that's a very, very thin uh, sleeve in there. And the sleeve is like a, has like a chrome plate on it. It's very, very smooth, uh, very precise, um, and it's a very thin wall thickness, but it's pressed in there, and of course it lines up with those holes, right? So what that means is, uh, being chromium, uh, it has a very nice fit to, to uh, the spool as it fits in there, so it's got a, a real close fitting, very precise mechanism such that the fluid can't leak around it. So between where the spool is and that chrome sleeve, uh, it's such a tight tolerance that fuel can't leak around it. I mean, it's a valve, right? So uh, that pretty much explains what's going on, I think. Uh, 
so again, so when you're like that, you know, you're in the idle position, you increase it, you shut off the idle circuit, and you start ramping up the fuel till that spool gets that slot perfectly vertical. And then you're letting all the fuel that's possible buy it and out to your nozzles. So that's pretty much it. It's a, oh, one last thing about, about the, the groove cut in the spool there. Let me show that one more time here. So the width of this groove cut in here, um, obviously the width of it has an effect on how much fuel can go through as well. So if you had like, uh, uh, we're running a blower. Uh, this would be, a, you know, a blown engine. The, the spool for it would be wider because you're obviously going to be using a lot more, passing a lot more fuel through it. Um, there are several other spools. If you had like a really large cubic inch engine, it would also be a, a little bit bigger spool. Now, this one here is, is probably good for, I think it's good for both uh, gasoline and methanol. Um, I would think, you know, you could maybe have narrower ones for gasoline, but maybe, maybe not. I'm not really sure about that part of it, but, uh, there's a, a number of different uh, spools that are available for most of these, uh, barrel valves. Although this, you know, it's a 1970s vintage, um, they pretty much want to sell you a brand new barrel valve these days instead of... And this thing should last for, I mean, the, as old as this is, that uh, tolerance in there is still spot on. I mean, it is, it's a nice snug fit. I can't imagine it getting much better than that. So anyways, when you put it back together, make sure the spring is in there. This just fits on here like this. Screws back together. Your fuel for the input goes here, obviously. If I can get the threads to align. Uh, it is like really hot out here. I have no air conditioning in my garage here today. So there it is. It's the spool of the barrel valve. Um, there was something else I wanted to mention about it, and you know, it escapes me right now. Um, oh, okay. also, just to notice, so there is a slot on the end of this, so that if you were uh, working on adjusting your uh, linkage to get the proper geometry, you know, you wouldn't be able to hold the spool still if you're rotating the arm on it when you're locking the arm down in the position you want. So this would allow you to hold it, you know, get it into a rough, uh, you know, close position before you lock down you know, your, your uh, arm on there. Um, and then of course, when you're doing your, your leak down, you would do the fine tuning with the, the linkage to it. So that's about all I've got on the barrel valve. Um, I, I actually, I actually did, uh, this is the second time I've, I've filmed this. I did it a little earlier today and there was a fly buzzing around and the fly would not leave me alone. And I was going to leave it. And then I thought, yeah, there'll be some comments about that. <laughs> so anyhow, um, these barrel valves are still available. There are a lot of different configurations. Um, some of them have the ports come out the front and the back. Uh, there's some of them that are only have, they have four ports, you know, for smaller engines. Um, and of course, uh, all the companies that I talked about earlier would, could help you with a, with a new barrel valve if you needed one. Um, you know, Mike over at Elkie Digger, he's awesome. Uh, been doing it for, yeah, he's an old racer. Uh, been doing it for, I don't know, probably 50 years. He's, just, <laughs> I think he's in his seventies. He still loves talking about the stuff. Uh, and then uh, of course there's, uh, 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 fuel injection enterprises. Uh, that's always a good place to go. And then there's Kinsler. Um, they have a lot more stuff. Uh, in their catalog, um, you just have to kind of see what, uh, what suits your needs and your budget. So, uh, I think that's all I've got this time. So anyways, if you find any of this information that I've been sharing useful, um, just remember, you know, this is not a monetized channel. 
Uh, I don't make any money off of this stuff. Um, I started it as kind of a, a one-shot thing, and I kind of kind of got out of control, to be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't really plan on doing all these videos, but but I've had some some such positive comments. Guys are like, hey, that really helped me out a lot. Hey, I, and 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 not just like you know guys that have an engine hanging from a tree in their backyard. I mean, there's a couple guys that were doing the you know uh, salt flats racing and stuff like that. Contacted me. Uh, it's pretty cool. You know, and again. I like to hear from you guys, you know, what you're doing, if you've got any projects you're working on. Um, I'm always interested in that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, and, and again, so, you know, if you've got some good information out of this, you want to help me out a little bit, you want to buy me a beer, you know, there's a link below. You can, you know, you can uh, click it and help me out a little bit if you feel like it. Um, I do have a question. So, my son... This is really off topic, but I'm going to throw it out here. My son, he's uh, 27, I guess. Um, he has uh, an LS motor and a uh, GMC Envoy, and he wants to put a nitrous system. Actually, he purchased a nitrous system. He, he put a big cam in it, did the DOD delete and stuff. Um, put a big cam in it, uh, wants to put a nitrous on it, and he actually got the the system he bought it it was brand new somebody had bought it and never never installed it so he, he got it for good that was enticing to him i'm interested to know if you guys would be interested in seeing how we do the install of it i mean it's it's a little about out of my swim lane but you know i i've done worse done <laughs> i've done other things that are out of my swim lane that turned out pretty good so anyways hey thanks for watching and uh, that's all i got this time not sure when the next video will be out. Uh, obviously, I got to put this all together. I got to repeat everything that we did on the previous videos with uh, the uh, butterflies and such. But we're going to get this thing running. I'm going to take this son of a gun down the down the quarter mile here before I die. All right. Hopefully, hopefully that'll be sooner than later. Okay. Not the death part. The quarter mile part. See you.